Hey everybody, it's Rory from ANS Gear, and today we're going to learn how to do some general maintenance on your paintball markers. All right, so today we are going to look at a G6R. This one happens to be a tactical that we have in front of us, but the breakdown for the G6R standard, the Ripper G6R, the tactical, it's all going to be the same. So the bodies are going to come apart the same, the internals are going to be the same, the, uh, the process will be the same. Uh, they might look different on the outside, but uh, they're all the same on the inside. So let's go ahead and get the barrel off of this one. Get that out of the way. Really don't need that on there. Uh, let's break the parts of the gun down and just get the stuff separated out. And then we can talk about each one of them individually. So the first thing I'm going to do is just remove my grip covers. Get those off, get them out of the way. We don't need them on the gun. And I definitely recommend just if you're servicing or doing work, take the grips all the way off. It's only three screws extra. When you work with just one half of the grip still on, they can get in the way. You're constantly fighting them to keep them open. Just take them off. Take them off and move them over. All right, so from here, we're going to get our battery out right there. And then um, I'm going to disconnect the wiring. Even though I'm not going to pull the frame off right now, I'm going to disconnect it. So I'm going to get my eye wires and my solenoid wire, and I'm going to pull them apart. So our solenoid wire would be the red one. And then our set of eye wires is this white jumble right there. We're just going to pull them up and just leave them sitting uh, right there for now. Next, we're gonna take our reg apart. Now this one, hopefully I can get it off of there. Let me see if I can get a hold of it with this towel and get it off. If not, I might need to go downstairs and put it in the vise and get it off of there. Let me try one other thing real quick. All right, I'm gonna pause this real quick and I'm gonna go get this rig off of there. Okay, so I put, uh, took it downstairs and I had to put the gun in our soft jaw on our vise um, and it grabs it right around the regulator here and then I was able to rotate that off. So a lot of times what will happen is what you saw happening a second ago where the regulator, the upper section of the regulator is in the body up here and then just the lower section wants to unscrew and come off you want to make sure you're getting the upper section off as well although technically you can access everything you need by just unscrewing the lower section out you can get to the valve and you could get to the piston and everything that's in the bottom half but there are o-rings on the top side that if you needed to replace you would have to get that section off of there so, in the sake of getting everything apart, there you go. We're taking all that off. Take our LPR off. There we go. Now, from this point, we're going to, um, I'm going to do the feed neck, get that off, and then we'll take our back cap off. feed neck, if you don't remove the feed neck, you cannot get these two halves of the body. Remember, a G6R is split vertically in the body as well. So not only does the frame separate from the body, because this comes this way, but also there's a cut down the very middle this way so that you can separate these two pieces this way. Very different than really any gun out there in that sense. So we've got that off. We're going to take our eye covers, move them over. I'm going to move this over to this side. I'm going to 
carefully remove my spring and detent. Don't want to lose those. Oops. I'm pushing the, the detent up with my finger. I probably could just flip the gun over and have it fall out, but just wanted to get that over there. Actually, let me move these over so they're still in the frame there. All right, so that's off. I'm going to flip it over. That spring. No, so you, if you're pulling those out of there, make sure they're clean, clean the hole, clean the actual piece itself, all that fun stuff. Now we're going to take off our we're gonna take our board out. which we don't have up here again. And I'm not going to be able to get it out with this oversized flathead screwdriver. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so went down and got the screwdriver. Let's see if we can make it through the rest of this without having to stop and go downstairs again. So small Phillips head screwdriver so that we can remove the screw that holds the eye board in place. Now the eye boards are sided, there's a left and there is a right side version. So we have unscrewed the left and now this is a 2CI. So if you're not familiar with the Bob Long guns, they're sensors. The, the stock gun comes with a 2CI. There is a 4CI and there is a, also a laser eye. The 4CI just has an extra sensor that sits higher up in the breech. You can see, you might, well, you might not be able to see. I'm gonna try to show you anyway. So on the, the board itself, you can see that little black dot that's on there. Well, it looks like there's a bunch of black dots because my shirt's black. So right here, that one right there, that is the sensor. And it sits at the bottom of the, well, close to the bottom of the breech and it senses the paintball inside there. Up higher, there's another hole right here and you can get a different board that has two sensors on it. One up high sensor, one down low sensor, and it knows when the paint starts to move, it senses that higher up in the stack and you can get a faster reaction time on it because the gun can predict where the paint is coming down and how fast it's coming down and allow the bolt to cycle quicker than it normally would because it knows where the paint is and where it's going to be. So that's just an upgrade you can get. Two CIs, two sensors, four CIs, four sensors, and then laser ones, which just light up and are fancy. They don't really shoot lasers out of them, although that would be pretty cool too. All right, so we've got our eyes disconnected and our wires are free on the sides there. We've got the bottom of the frame disassembled, well, most of it. We are going to then get the bolt out and get our ram assembly out. So we need to pull off our cap on the back. I think it's this one. Nope, too big. Next one down. So her ram cap. There we go. Ram cap. Now we can undo our bolt. Now, depending on the body style of your gun, you probably will see your bolt sticking up over the top. Now on a, or your bolt pin, I should say. Because this is a tactical version and the rail is up here on the top, they want to make sure that the bolt pin isn't going to hit anything that is potentially attached to the rail. So we're gonna um, pop the pin up. There's a little hole that runs through the pin on this one where you could put something in and pop the bolt up and then allow you to slide it out the back here like that. There we go. Now we can get our RAM out. So our RAM is down inside there. 
you could probably get it to jiggle out like that. If it won't pop out just from you jiggling it, you could put um, you know an Allen key in there and help slide it out. Just make sure you're not scratching it up uh, or scratching the body up and just being gentle with it. All right, now, we've got those over here. Let's get the rest of the body apart. So uh, we'll pull the frame off right now. And then we'll take anything of the frame apart that we need to. So frame screw, you have a front frame screw right here, which I just removed. The rear frame screw, you have to access through the top and it goes down in there. So we're gonna take this put that in there and we are going to turn it now what can happen uh, if you don't have a t-handle version of this it's going to be a little harder to do so i'm going to put the allen key in there and then i'm going to use like a i'm just using the end of this wrench to kind of get better leverage on the allen key and then i can unscrew it if you have a t-handle allen key you could do it that way or whatever you need to do to get it in there. When I put this back together, I'm not going to tighten it down so much that I won't be able to undo it by hand in the future. And there's that. Now from here, we'll be able to separate the upper and lower from each other. Now it's very important at this point, we do not yank our frame apart. As we move our frame down, this wire is going to get in the way this wire is going to get in the way and you need to be very gentle with pulling them apart. It's very easy to ruin the wiring right here. So as we pull down, I'm going to be feeling for where it's binding, where it's touching, what it's, what's not coming apart and just gently coaxing all the wiring so that it gets into the right spot. You can see that our eye wires are on this side or over here, they come together and go underneath this part of the manifold right here. Let's see if I can show you right here. So you've got eye wires coming from this side and this side. If we look at it from a top-down perspective, the left side has the four eye wire side, the right has the two wire side. They come around the front of the body right here, here, and they come together right there, and then they run underneath the manifold and up the back side where they would come out and then connect to the um, to the board. And then we've got this one down here. So we're gonna get we're gonna open that rest of that up in a minute. Let's do whatever we need to do with this. So we're gonna look at our frame, we'll look at our regulators, and then we'll get to our body. So our frame is really pretty straightforward. The one thing that I, I've seen people struggle with is if they remove the trigger, getting the trigger back in. So from this, once the frame has come off, I find that it is easier to just remove the trigger all together and then reinstall the trigger after the frame is back on the gun. Reason being, the trigger inside the frame here, it has this spring on the back of it. Okay, so the spring pushes the trigger back forward. When it's assembled and back together, the spring pushes on this part of the manifold. There's actually a hole right here that this spring sits inside of. Now, when that's all together, that's all fine and dandy. But as soon as you separate these two out, this thing wants to rotate inside here. So if you leave it like this and go to push this back together, the bottom of this block right here is going to crush the spring because the spring, it'll actually come together like this where the spring gets smashed on the bottom right there and it doesn't go together properly because it needs to sit up inside like that. Now you may say, well, why don't you just pull the trigger forward like this as you put the frame on? Well, 
this doesn't let that happen. When this comes forward, it's going to push against here, and it's going to automatically want to pivot the trigger back. So it's going to automatically push this spring underneath this part of the solenoid manifold, and you will end up uh, squashing it. So it's easier just to leave it to the side, put the frames back together, and then put the trigger in, and then you know the spring is in the right spot. The spring has been sprung. Okay, so from here, if you needed to remove your board, you just pull the screws out from your board. If you needed to remove your screen, you'd pull the screws out from your screen and take that all off. As far as the ASA goes, um, I know, well, I shouldn't say I know. There is probably a 95% chance that I am not going to get this ASA apart up here. I'll try, we'll see what happens. The inner core does not like to come out easily. So I'm gonna pull the bottom off. I'm gonna to explain to you what to do and we'll go from there. All right, so we got our the bottom core off, or the, not the core, the bottom ASA off. So right here is a crucial O-ring right there. So this O-ring seals between the ASA and the frame. So if you ever get a leak coming from like here, that's this section I'm talking about, like in here, that's because of that O-ring right there. It seals to the bottom right there, to right there. So that happens, I've seen that happen. I've seen people dive and just the stress of the gun hitting the ground can just barely move the ASA, like it just shifts it slightly and it allows that O-ring to come out of its pocket and then it starts to leak, it pops out. So um, that O-ring I've seen cause, cause problems before. All right, so from here, you see the core down inside there? It's got four holes in it around the outside of it. And that's what you're gonna grab onto and try to get it up and out of there. Now, like I said before, getting that out is not as easy as it sounds. You have to get a pair of pliers, a pair of like uh, needle nose pliers with a good grip on the front of them to get them out of there. Now I just have some, some um, rounded tip pliers, which is not going to let me grab it and pull it out of there. But if you needed to replace the core, you would just get a hold of that and then pop it out. Now I have seen where it won't come out still like that. And the only way to get it out at that point is to take a long screw and you thread it through one of those holes down there and then you screw it in. And as it screws down in, it'll hit the bottom, but you'll still be able to turn it and it will work as like an elevator. You keep turning that screw through the brass core and it'll pull the brass core up and out and you'll be able to get it out that way. Now that's on a, in, in a extreme situation. I've had to do that before, uh, but it's very rare. Usually you can just grab a hold of it, pop it out, and with some wiggling and some good grip, you should be able to get that out. Now this part right here, if you do need to uh, do anything with the lever, you need to remove this screw on the back side. Once this comes off, right there, this will allow the lever to slide out. Now, there's a couple things about this. If you remove this, there are two things that could possibly fall out, and if you lose them, they won't work. So there's a little spring that goes in the pocket. So we'll put the spring down. There's a little pocket, little hole right here. The spring goes inside of that. So let's not lose that. Put the spring back down inside there. There we go. Now the other thing that sometimes will sit where it is right there, or it will sit on top of the spring is a ball bearing, which is very easy to lose. Right there. What the ball bearing does is it rides in this little channel that's around the outside here 
and that's what allows it to rotate and then find a stop position and then rotate and find a stop position. The spring pushes the bearing up into these little pockets and that's what locks this into its rotational position. If you lose either of those two things, it's not gonna work. So if you decide for some reason you need to service this and pull it apart, do not lose those. Very important. There we go. Make sure you tighten that up. And then test it. You should be able to turn it. And it goes to a point where it doesn't rotate anymore. Turn it the other direction. You should hear it snap into place. Just like that. So that bearing just got popped up into that little spot and is now being held solid. All right. So we're going to put this back together real quick and just set it to the side. Because we're done. We're done with this. So there are a couple o-rings on the top of the frame that we'll talk about real quick. So you've got an o-ring that sits up here. Again, another small o-ring like the one that's down in here. And that that is the other end of this tube right here. So the air comes into the, the ASA at the bottom. It's going to go up. Excuse me. I sneeze. Into the ASA, up through a, a hole in the frame. And then it comes out the top of the frame right here and transfers up into the body of the gun. So those two pieces, this hole right there, mates up with this hole right here. And there needs to be an O-ring that seals those two things. So that's what this O-ring is for right there. It seals the surface here to here. If you get a leak right there, replace that O-ring. Now that leak, if you have a leak in this area, it could be a lot of different things. But start with that O-ring because it's pretty simple to replace. And then also, there is an O-ring that's right here on the front of the frame. Now, they've basically created a volume chamber inside the frame right here. So they have machined out this section of the frame to just be hollow on the inside. And the air that comes in and is stored right here, which is where the, our valve is, is also stored down in here. So there's a hole coming from the bottom and it's sealed with that gasket, that O-ring right there, which allows this whole section to fill with air and work as a volumizer, an, an air reservoir basically inside there. So there are no moving parts inside there, it's just a, a cavity for air. All right, so frame over there. We're gonna do our reg. So for O-rings on the regulator, there's one that sits right on the top here. There's also an O-ring that is inside here along the outside edge. It's on the inside, but it is not on this. It's This seals in it when it, you thread it in. So two O-rings inside there. Let's open this up. So inside here, is our piston. So there's our piston right there with our O-rings, or our O-ring, I should say. There's not multiple O-rings, there's just one. And then I'm going to grab this, and this is our shim stack right there. So make sure if you remove this out and that you pull shims off to clean them, that you put them back in in the proper orientation. They are not flat shims. They are a Belleville washer, so they are um, call them concave or convex, depending on which way you're looking at it. And you need to stack them appropriately all the way up. And they are opposites all the way up. So you should have, you flip them every time you put them on to create the stack that looks like that. And that just goes together like that. Down in the bottom, you have your adjustment screw which is going to push against the bottom of this, which creates movement inside there, which in turn will adjust your velocity or adjust your pressure. I'm not going to say it's adjust your velocity. It adjusts the pressure inside the gun, which can 
adjust velocity. Last part up in here is our valve. Here, so to get this out, you're going to want to use something that uh, can grab a hold of a flat surface, and then we're going to rotate it out. Right here. So this is a Schrader valve. This is the same kind of valve that you would see, although this isn't the same valve, it's something that you would see in like a bike tire or a car tire. When this gets pushed on, on this side, you can see the valve opens up on the other side. So it is possible that the valve can fail and the regulator doesn't regulate properly. So it's a very simple fix. You replace your Schrader valve if you have reg issues. So typically in this reg, uh, an issue will arise from either the valve failing or the piston or ring going bad. That's really it. Those are the only two things in the regulator that can not work. So very easy to um, troubleshoot, very easy to fix, and even easier to reassemble. All right, so there's that one. Now this, on the other hand, a little bit different. It still has a, the same kind of valve inside of it as we saw over there. But disassembly on this is a little bit different. So we've got two pieces inside here. We have the cap, which is this part right here, which we see from the outside of the gun. But then we also see, have the core right here. So this core is threaded into the cap, and it is reverse threaded into the cap. So this is what we're going to do. To get this apart, or to adjust it, move it, whatever we need to do. So. The silver part on the inside right there is the adjustment. So if we were to move this around, we would be controlling pressure going into our solenoid assembly. But right now what we want to do is get it to the point where um, we can get an Allen key into the front part right here. So I'm going to pull this out, and that is our adjustment screw. With the adjustment screw out, it gives us access to a pocket where we can, I think this is the right size. Nope, that was one, one shy. We can put an Allen key into the front and it is cut on purpose to fit that. Now, with an adjustable wrench, there is flat spots on the end right here. There's two flat spots and I'm gonna put them on here. And I'm going to turn like I was tightening it, okay? So I'm going to turn it clockwise. Normally, if you turn something clockwise, it would tighten into whatever thing if you had a standard thread on it. But because this is reverse threaded, as I turn it clockwise, it unthreads. So it's coming out right now. And it pops out right there. Let's see if I can wiggle this out. I just want to loosen it up a little bit. Come on, you. My hands are awfully, awfully slimy. So this is our piston, if I can get a hold of it and get it out of here. Very similar to the setup we saw on the HPR. There it goes, come on out. So close. We'll get it. Bear with me. Oh, come on. Oh, yep. Oh, so close. Oh, I just pushed it back in there. I want to get this out so you guys can see what we're talking with or what we're dealing with here. There we go. Just get that as much out as we can. So close to the edge right there. 
is riveting. our piston just a smaller version of the one that we saw inside here so we've got our adjuster here this is our trigger pin I don't want to get that separate there so we've got our adjustment which pushes against a plate which pushes against the spring which in turn pushes against the piston and then the piston pushes against the valve that's inside there and opens and closes. Now this valve is recessed a little bit further down inside. It's not so accessible like the other one where I can just grab it with this, but you'll do the same thing. It's the same style valve. It is not the same valve though. It is a different shape. It is a different size. So you cannot switch between the two, uh, but it is the same thing that makes sense just a smaller version of the same thing and I'm not going to try to get that out with this because again this is not the right tool for the job yeah I'm just going to ruin it if I try to get it out with that so I'm not going to but you'd put a pair of needle nose down in there get a hold of it on the flat spots just like we did with this unscrew it pop it out replace it if you need to that's it Put it back together. Piston in. Spring in. Make sure everything is moving as it should. Perfect. Get that there. Put our plate on the top. Now remember, it's reverse threaded. So we're gonna turn this like we were unscrewing it and it will thread itself in. Okay, so there we are. Um, we can go ahead and put this back in, but what I would do is before you do that, just give it a little cinch. Little cincheroo. Remember, reverse threaded. So we're going to go opposite, just like that. And again, you see how much force I put into that? Hardly any. We'll put this back in to where it was. And I remember it being from, from all the way bottom down, all the way down, we were about a turnout. So right about there. So that's it, that's our HPR and our LPR. Now, let's get into the body a little bit. Um, so we can separate the front apart without having to pull this apart. We're gonna undo these front two screws. So there's two screws that come in from the front right here. We're going to open them up. Now, what I will tell you guys is it's very easy to damage the body not damage it at the point where it doesn't work, but it's very easy to put marks into the body. If you put this Allen key in here and then you just crank this down, as soon as it rotates to here and hits the body, you'll put a mark into it. So just be very aware of how hard you're turning and as soon as it breaks free and it jumps, you could possibly scratch the body up. So just be careful. Once you break it free, go ahead and Turn that out, put that one over there, and then we're going to do the same thing to this side. And again, I'm going to be very aware of how far I'm turning and how much force I'm putting into it so I don't damage anything. Okay. 
Come on out, little guy. Come on. There you are. All right. So we've got that apart. Now from here, we should be able to just wiggle our front and back halves apart. Just like that. So from where we sit right here, sometimes, depending on just how it comes apart, there are three O-rings that you need to worry about. And sometimes they stick to this side. Sometimes they stay in the homes where they were originally. It really comes down to just what happens when you pull it apart. So I'm going to grab a hold of the spring and I'm going to pull this out. So here's our poppet. The valve is part of the body inside there. Uh, if I remember correctly, the valve does not come out because it is part of the body. I'm pretty sure that's right. I got to think about that for a second. Yeah, that's right. So that won't come out of there. Uh, but we do have right here. So there is a gasket that sits around here. And then there's another one that's right here. And then there's another one that's right here. So this seals this main chamber right here. And then these two small ones seal against this right here. So just be aware of those. And if you've got leaks, troubleshoot where your leaks are coming from according to that. All right, so from here, I believe the last thing to look at or to deal with would be to remove the our manifold assembly right here. So we've got one screw here. Again, that will not let that come off. One there. And then we've got one here. And as you can see, I'm stacking them next to each other. They are different sizes. Okay, so there's two short ones and then one longer one. The long one goes in the front on the higher section. The short ones go at the back or, yeah, I call it the back, where the, um, the lower section is. And if I lift this up, we will see everything kind of coming out here. So be very delicate with those. And again, I want to show you guys where the wiring is, is passing through. We want to make sure that all of our wiring stays and goes in the right spot. So remember we talked about the wiring coming over the top and under, over the top and under. It does not go underneath and then under. So don't crush that. All right, there we go. So there's our eye wires. Here's our solenoid on our manifold. We've got some gas O-rings on the bottom down here that just seal up this lower section. They actually stayed in the body, so there's an O-ring right there and right there. If you get leaks, these are the sections that you're going to be looking for, for body leaks. All right. I'm not going to take this out because I would have to pull the hose out um, from this back section back here, and I'm not really wanting to do that just because I have to replace the hose potentially just because a little stretch as I pull it off of there. I don't want to ruin that hose. So I'm not going to stretch it unnecessarily and then have to replace it as well. So I'm just going to leave it in there. But if you did need to take it out, Allen key into the back right there, unscrew it, pop it out. You'll unscrew it, it'll come out a little bit to here, and then you can separate the fitting out of the tube, and then you would slide it back the other way. Or, you could disconnect it from that fitting right there, but it's really hard to get to that one unless you're removing the solenoid, but we're not doing any of that stuff. So we're going to leave that all alone. All right. 
let's put it back together. Again, this crosses over the top. Like that. So before I tuck that down in there, I am going to push it through and make sure that it is in its home. Now remember this side over here, the wiring comes up and over. It does not go under until it gets to the midsection right here. We've got all our wires up on the side, which is where we want them. We've got these wires up on the side, which is where we want that. They come together at the midsection and then they pass underneath the manifold coming out the back side. So that's good. We're going to put our long screw in. Our short screws go in the middle. adjust my wiring make sure that I don't have anything pinched I always there's so many times that I've seen guns come in and the eye wires are crushed or smashed and I think it's just because people they think they're doing a, a good job right away they make sure everything is in the right spot and they they put it there and it is but then they forget about it at that point they go okay I put it in there right I don't need to worry about it anymore slam my frames together and while they were doing something a wire kind of just rolled over like this and now if, if it was sitting like this and I went to put the frame back on this lip of the frame right here is going to sit right along there and if this is pushed over just a little bit it's gonna smash it and crush it down right there so I always I'm just looking this is, it's not a race, it's an expensive thing. And it's a, a cost that you don't need to give yourself for no reason. So those are good. Let's put our pop it back in. If you get a breech leak, if you are hearing it coming down or up the feed neck or down the breech, check the cup seal. So the cup seal, this is the, actually the sealing surface right here. So this face, this is called the face right here, this white part around the edge, this seals against the surface inside here, like that. And when the ram comes forward, like this, boop, it hits basically the backside of this, it hits it like this, and it pushes it back. You can see the spring compressing and pushing back. So this face surface, when this hits it, it pushes this back, the face surface comes off, doesn't seal anymore, and allows air to come up through the bottom. And then the spring pushes it back shut. When the ram retracts, when this jumps backwards, the spring pushes the cup seal right here back forward, and it seals, and you get ready for the next shot. So if you have air coming up through the feed neck or down the barrel, it's because this surface Typically, it's because this surface isn't sealing properly on the inside. This could be damaged. It could have got a piece of dirt that put a hole or a pit in it, and it just doesn't make a good, clean seal anymore, and you get um, a breach, a breach leak or a barrel leak. And that's typically a cup seal problem, and that's very common in this style gun. You get breach leaks, that's where to look for the problem. That's my first thing I would look at if I had a, a, a feed neck or a breech leak. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the our halves back together. So we're gonna make sure before we put this half together that our O-rings are properly in place. And if we had done cleaning and maintenance and replaced those, we would also want to make sure that they were greased properly 
and then put back together. So I made sure that my wiring isn't pinched anywhere. I gently put my two pieces back together. I'm going to put these screws in place. And then I'm going to put them back in. And again, being very careful not to rub or run the Allen key against the body. This is where ball end Allen keys come in really handy because I don't need to come in at a perfectly straight angle. I can come in offset and make sure that I'm not damaging or touching the body. Do the other side. And that one backed up, turned it backwards first, make sure the threading lines up. This is not the section of the gun where you want to cross thread a, a screw. So always rotate backwards until you feel it lock into place or drop into place and then go ahead and thread it in. Never force it. If you start to thread that in and it doesn't go in nice and smooth, stop what you're doing, start over immediately. All right. So from here we could do a couple different things. We could um, put the frame on if we wanted to, uh, or we can work around the top. So we're going to work around the top real quick. We're going to put our eye covers back on, our sensors back in, and our feed neck back on, our detents back in, all the stuff that we can do right here, and then we'll move forward from there. So let's go ahead and, and start from that. So our sensors are actually marked, there's an R and an L on them, but if for some reason there wasn't, don't worry because you can't put them in the wrong side. Like the right side won't go in on the left side. So you don't have to worry about not putting them in the right spot. And then I think it's the lower section that's threaded. Let's just check here. Because there's holes obviously drilled for certain things. because you've got a hole that holds the um, the eye sensor in place and then you've got a hole that is going to hold the eye cover in place and I can never remember which is which so I I got that one backwards so the upper hole is for the sensor the lower hole is for the eye cover and I guess if you put this together like I did right there and then you tried to put your eye cover back on, you're like, man, why won't this screw in? Well, there you go. There's your answer. It's because the screw's in the wrong spot. There we go. Now let's get our spring and one of our detents. Just drop your detent in. Make sure it sits down in there. Spring goes right on top. And we just lay our eye cover right on top of that. And tighten that down. Again, all of these screws, <clears throat> if they don't just thread right in, don't force it. Back it up and start over. And that's not just for this gun. That's for anything paintball related. I shouldn't even say paintball related. That's just anything any related whenever you're screwing something together. Never force it. All right, so a lot of people will be tempted to put the ram in and put the bolt back in. Don't do that. That's probably the last thing that we're going to do is put the ram, the bolt, and the cap back on. There's a lot of other things that we have to do first that require this part, the ram, to be out of the gun because we have that screw that comes in from the top. If the ram's in there, we can't put the screw in. So we'll, we'll just leave those three pieces till the very end and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll deal with that when we need to.
Now that our, we've got these two pieces buttoned up and everything, we can put our feed neck back on. Obviously, we can't put the feed neck on if the two halves of the body aren't together because the feed wick would have nothing to grab onto. And then always make sure that your feed neck is tight and secure because it does hold a loader in place and loaders can be pretty heavy with paint. So make sure that's good and tight. I'm going to put the LPR on. I am not going to put the reg on though. I'm going to leave this off just because it'll be easier to put this on with this out of the way. You could do it. It's not a big deal, but I'm not going to do it that way. So I'm going to put the frame back on now. So I'm going to move my wiring around a little bit. I'm going to try to get the wiring set up so that it's going to feed through the frame easier. So I've got these things I'm going to look at right now. I'm going to make sure that this stuff is still out of the way. And again, I will, before I put my frame all the way together, I'm going to go back over here and look at it. I'm going to kind of rotate these things around so that the wiring I can pass through easily. Now before I start pushing this up, I'm going to start feeding my wires through so that I don't smash anything. See how this wire has come over the side of the solenoid? I don't want that. I want this wire to sit behind the solenoid completely. So I'm going to grab it and pull it down out of there. If you run it along the side, you could smash it against the side of the frame. So I'm going to make sure that that's down there. I'm going to make sure that this doesn't pinch up there. As you're pushing this down in, the, the body down in here, the solenoid's moving down, where the wire for the solenoid comes out, it sticks out directly 90 degrees to the solenoid right here. And it gets caught on a lot of things right here. Another thing, if you left the trigger in there, the trigger is going to get caught on this wiring assembly too. So like I said from the beginning, it is just easier to not have the trigger installed when you're trying to do this. So here's a perfect example of a wire that is about to be ruined if I tried to tighten this all down. You can see right here, you can see the eye wire is trapped in between the frame and the body. And if I didn't notice that and I started to put this screw in and I put that screw in, it would smash this wire and then my eye wires would be ruined. So from here, I'm going to tuck that back down in there. Then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to look at this side, make sure that I don't have any wires that are in the way. Flip it back over. And I should have a good, solid connection between the two of these, the frame and the body, without even tightening them down. I don't see any gaps. I don't see any spaces. It looks good from both sides. Now I can put this in. So I'm going to start with the front one because it's easy to get to. And now that that front one is in, I know that that wiring isn't going to pop out of there. The back side will kind of lift up a little bit because we don't have that other screw in yet. But we'll put that one in right now. So the easiest way I've found to put this screw in and to get it to line up properly is we're going to slide it in. So I'm going to take the screw and as I've got the gun set up right here, I'm going to put the screw in head first. All right. If you put it in thread first, it doesn't have a way to get into the pocket. So we're going to put it in head first this way. We're going to slide it back like this. Okay. Then I'm going to pivot it forward and drop it into the slot so it's going to come like this and then it's going to fall into the slot this way. Because of the way the body is designed, if we go this way, the screw cannot pivot down into the body this way. The head of the screw ends up hitting part of the body and it just doesn't fit. So we're going to go head first, 
We're going to go past the hole, and then we're going to bring it in and just drop it right down. It is easier to do this than it is to try to drop it in from the top right here and then hope that it lines up properly. So I'm going to put it in head first. I'm going to push it backwards. I'm going to drop it into the hole. And then I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. Very simple. All right, so now I'm going to hand tighten that. I'm going to give it a good snug, and that's it. Everything looks good. Look down there to make sure that the screw is dropped past flush, that it's tightened up properly. Otherwise, when this goes in, I don't want it to hit that screw. Now I can put that in. I can put the cap back on. Now, a lot of times, if you're not careful when putting the cap on, there is an O-ring that runs around the outside of the cap. It runs right here all the way around. And it's very easy to pinch that O-ring. So when I put this on, I'm going to make sure that the cap sits evenly on all the way around and that the O-ring hasn't popped out and it doesn't want to let the cap sit on there. Sometimes they just slide right on like this one did. Other times you'll have to um, kind of, you'll put one side on and you'll see that it'll, it'll have shifted. One side drops in, but the other side is where the O-ring is bunched out. You'll just push the O-ring in and then close the cap at the same time so that it just all sits nice and snug on there. All right, so that's on there. Let's go ahead and put our bolt in. Make sure that you lock your bolt in properly. Can't tell you how many times I've seen stuff get ruined from people that aren't putting their bolts in the right way. All right. So from here, I'm going to connect my wiring real quick. I'm going to plug in my solenoid. I'm going to plug in my eye wires. And all of this will tuck in later on. That usually sits kind of like that. This usually runs right down here. Our battery sits in there. We'll put the battery in when we go to put the grips on. But now we've got to get that trigger in there. This could be tricky because the way the spring sits in here, it likes to pop out sometimes. Um, this is a little bit harder to describe. It's easy. You can kind of see it from this angle right here. So right here, this metal thing that you see right there is our micro switch. Okay. When we go to put this in, the spring, just because of the spacing that we have for the trigger to fit inside there, right from the beginning, the spring is going to want to push on that micro switch. So as we push this into the body, we're going to have to get the spring to go up over the micro switch so that when the trigger gets far enough in, we can pop it up into place and then it doesn't touch the micro switch at all. If we just push this in, the spring will push the micro switch down and it will get caught on it and probably pop off of this and then you'll have to fish the spring out, reattach it and start over. So what I do is I start to put this in, it pushes on the, the micro switch, I'll take my pick and I'll lift the spring up over the switch, giving me the room to get the trigger in and then um, lining it up properly. So we're gonna do that so you can see I'm going to put the trigger in, and you can already see that the, the spring is pushing against the micro switch right now. And I've got the trigger as far up, like I don't have any more space to go up, and I'm still pushing against it. So I'm going to hold the trigger, I'm going to take my pick, and I'm going to push the spring up over the top of the switch. And that allows me to then slide the trigger back and line the hole in the bearing 
up with the hole in the side of the frame. And screw it in. And I can test it. I'm getting the right return on it. That might take you a couple times to get the hang of. I've done it many times, so I know what to expect and I know what to feel inside there. Now, I don't, oh they do. The back of the board, some of these boards are marked positive and negative, so make sure that you're putting your, um, your terminals in properly. If it's not marked, put the battery in, try to turn the gun on. If it turns on, you're good. If it doesn't, flip the battery around. All right, so now the last thing we have to do is put the grips on or the screws into the grips. I talked a couple times earlier about screws and putting them in the right way, not cross-threading them. I have found on Bob Long guns, especially the G6Rs, that the three grip screws are very, very easy to cross-thread. So I'm going to put these in always backing them up first and then putting them down in. If you cannot just turn this in as easy as I'm turning it in right here, it is cross threading. You should not have to force this screw in. It should be very easy to turn. If it doesn't do it right from the beginning, see like there, it doesn't want to go in. Sometimes I have to actually hold the screw in place to make sure it stays vertically lined up with the hole. It could be the grips are pushing on it, it could be just the thread is weird, but I find this quite often on these guns where it does not want to thread in. I go backwards, I can hear it drop into spot like that, and then as soon as I try to go forward, the screw shifts over and it doesn't want to thread in properly. So I come to the thing where I just hold them in place until I find it threading in, and then it will go right down in there. Believe me, it's, I don't know why it does it, but on these guns, I see it more than any other thing. So just take your time. Like I just get to the habit where I, I'm just holding the screw in general now on these to keep that screw vertical and have it go in. And sometimes I'll find a screw that I'll try three, four, five, six times to get it in there and it doesn't want to go. And I'll get frustrated with it and I'll just put it in a different hole. And it seems to thread in easier in a different hole. And then I'll try a different screw in the one I was trying to get into. And that one will go in there. So there you have it. G6R breakdown, uh, which will work for the standard G6R, the tactical G6R, the Ripper G6R. They all come apart the same. Internally, they'll be the same. Uh, hope that helps.